Hey guys, so I expect it's common knowledge to more than a few of you that the 16.10 version of Lubuntu, the LXDE variant of the Ubuntu family of distributions, are going to be changing their desktop environment from LXDE to LXQT. Now, I'm reasonably familiar with both of these desktop environments, but I'm certainly more familiar with LXDE in no small part to the fact that I've used Lubuntu as my daily driver before, and it's a distribution that I really quite like, and it's the my go-to distribution for when I want to rescue old machines. And I've got machines that are 15 plus years old running on Lubuntu. So it's a very it's a distribution that I hold in very high regard um, because it does support like the you know the the ubuntu based distributions are known for being able to boot and, and are supported on the widest variety of hardware at least in my personal experience and um having a lightweight version of that is is that that works out of the box in so many ways uh, is is pretty fantastic so um, I was quite interested to, f to find out what the ramifications of this might be it could be nothing it could be something um but it prompted me to list all of the applications that I regularly use and to um, to list whether or not they're QT or GTK. Um, and I'm just going to read them out to you now. So my QT list of applications are Scribus, my desktop publishing program, KeyPass X, my password manager, uh, Caden Live, my video editor, and in my humble opinion, the best video editor available on Linux, um, Yak Yak, which I don't use anymore, I uninstalled because it was a little bit uh, unstable. It comes out of the AUR and is a desktop client for Google Hangouts and Google Chat, which is it's pretty good when it works, but like I said, I uninstalled it because it broke. Uh, VLC Media Player, a pretty darn good media player on uh, on Linux, one that I certainly use quite a lot. OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, live streaming uh, software that I use. Uh, Simple Screen Recorder, the best... Um, screen recording software are, are available on Linux in my opinion if you're just going for screen cap uh, partly because you can adjust the settings so that it uses uh, significantly less CPU uh, so you can actually record some pretty high fidelity graphics with it. Um, Krita, the uh, pretty good QT based um, image editing program and Inkscape. So all of these use the QT applications plus I think I've probably installed quite a few that's quite an old list um, and the GTK uh, applications that I use regularly are GIMP um, which I quite which I do quite enjoy but Krita is is a you know it's probably better if we're honest uh, but i don't use um image editing for anything fancy anyway so what's simple and works works for me um and then i've got chromium and firefox both using the gtk toolkit although as i understand it um they're chromium and the chrome browser will be switching to another toolkit i think uh or possibly might not even use the gtk toolkit but they use they take from the gtk um, color palette or something to do with that. Anyway, I'm, I'm putting it under the GTK list, but it might not necessarily always be true and it might not necessarily be true now. Um, Firefox and Thunderbird. So as you can see, with Chromium, Firefox and Thunderbird being under the GTK list, the applications that I tend to have always open um, are, on, are, are three of the four on the GTK list, which is quite interesting there. But the most advanced and complicated programs I have on the, any of these lists are probably Caden Live and OBS because they deal with video and audio, um, and both of them are QT. Caden Live uh, sits particularly well even in the KDE environment, and I'm running KDE at the moment, and I've got to say, I really do like KDE. To me, KDE looks like it could surpass Windows 10 in a heartbeat in, in the visual elements, in the user-friendliness of it all, um, and I would like to see more... Um, uh, desktop environments adopt it as they sort of de facto desktop environment because it gives a, a good degree of consistency across Linux distributions as well as a full feature desktop. Of course, for me, the big drawback of KDE or Plasma 5, I think as they're calling it now, of course, is the system resources. Although I have heard a number of you folks in the comments saying that it's actually quite easy to slim down KDE um, if, you're, you know, if, you, if you take out quite a lot of the non-essential components. So there's also that. Um, so I did actually try, um, as a result of actually making this list, uh, using KDE as my default desktop environment, and i got to say, I really did um, do like it. And I've always been drawn towards GTK-based desktop environments. Maybe that's because there are more of them. Um, maybe it's because the distribution that really got me into the swing of Linux was Ubuntu back in the GNOME 2 days. Um, but my first Linux distribution was SUSE. I think that was, a, that was about 1997 or something real, real long ago, and that had... KDE as its default desktop environment and I liked it then and I've always liked KDE um, 
But for some reason, I've always gone to GTK, where my opinion of all the GTK desktop environments has gone up and down like yo-yos all the time, whereas KDE, it seems to be reasonably consistently in favor of. But LXDE, or Lubuntu rather, are going to be moving to LXDE rather than KDE. So it's not going to K LXQT is not going to have all the benefits of being a KDE um, based distribution because KDE is going to have so many more components and libraries and stuff already bundled in by default, which I'm going to imagine that LXQT is going to be significantly more slimmed down, which minimizes the differences between LXDE and LXQT. They could very well be moving to LXQT for the sole reason that LXQT seems to have more more of a buzz about it right now. It seems to have more people, um, uh, more distributions sort of adopting it in their community distributions. Uh, and it just seems to be more active at the moment. So um, it might just be a pragmatic um, a ca a case of pragmatism that they want the most well-maintained desktop environment out of the, that still fits within their, their mission statement or their mission objectives. So... I gotta say, um, it's going to be brought in in the 16.10 version of Lubuntu, so in true form they're not going to be making drastic changes for the long-term support release, um, seemingly unlike the Ubuntu team, but there you go. They like to mix it up there at Canonical. Um, I've got to say, I would like to see more Qt-based desktop environments. Um, the difference between Qt and GTK is one that, I'm going to be honest, it goes over my head quite a lot because a lot of the discussion about it is to do with developers. But the, uh, and I know there's going to be opinions from both sides on this, and I, I'd be happy for you to sort of express your preference for one over the other down in the description below. But um, as I've understood it, um, from a professional slash enterprise standpoint, um, QT seems to be the go-to one. If you look at um, VirtualBox, the, um, that's also in QT as well. Um, and uh, Steam, I think, uses possibly something to do with QT as well. If I remember correctly, there might be something in their de dependencies, or they could very well actually be using their own toolkit. But... Um, but a lot of stuff seems to be seems to be going QT in the way that a lot of stuff seemed to be going GTK, you know, sort of uh, seven or eight years ago. So that's quite interesting. Let me know your thoughts down in the uh, comments below. Um, but I got to say, I have tried out uh, LXQT. I've tried out LXDE. I got to say, uh, LXQT definitely has more promise. It definitely seems like it's, it goes a little bit st uh, further in terms of um, user interface customizability and and your options available to you. Um, but but they um, I wouldn't switch out one for another on um, if one were to come as a default desktop environment. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on the subject. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.